Hello, in this video I will talk about two more submodules. Um, there are also about uh, calculus in, um, in SciPy. Well, yeah, the, the MISC submodule is not uh, solely about calculus, but this has just a couple of miscellaneous functions um, that don't really fit into other categories. And there are not uh, many functions in this submodule, but um, out of them I find this derivative function particularly uh, useful. Uh, so yeah, I will show you how that works. For the derivative, derivative function, um, you have to have a function that you want to um, derive and a location where you want to have the derivative of this function. So this function will not uh, take an arbitrary function and return the derived formula of this function, but this will instead um, take a function and then return the derivative at one location that you also pass to the derivative function. All right, so let's have a look at the function here. This is just a basic um, parabola, um, x squared. And um, yeah, for visualization, I also create uh, these x and y values, which are just a lin space and then the function applied to this lin space for the y values. And then, um, yeah, we get the derivative using this derivative function and we pass the lambda function to that and also this x position. And x is just a float, 0 0.5, and this tells the function the position where we want to uh, get the derivative. And then, um, yeah, I save this in this dx and dy. dx just comes from this one, so derivative only returns a float, which is then saved in this dy variable, um, which we can then use to have a look at uh, the derivative um, yeah, in our function. So if I run this, you can see uh, we have our function here in blue, and then the arrow here um, shows us the derivative of the position uh, 0 0.5, since we set x to 0 0.5, and the derivative here is 1. Um, so yeah, this is um, how we were able to compute the derivative for a certain location in this function. And if I change this value, um, for example, to negative 0.3, you can see that now the derivative points um, slightly downwards, um, exactly with the slope of the function at that certain position of 0 0.3. And the value for this derivative here is uh, minus 0.6. Um, so yeah, these are just, um, this is how you can compute a derivative of an arbitrary function um, using a numerical estimate in SciPy. Okay, then next up we have the optimized submodule. And the optimized submodule includes um, a couple of different functions for minimizing um, and finding the roots of functions. And there are functions, um, so SciPy is able to compute univariate and multivariate um, minima and uh, roots. So there are two different functions always for um, scalar functions or for univariate functions and um, then a more general function um, that, is, that is able to compute the minimum or the root of um, yeah, a multivariate function. Okay, so let's have a look at the minimize scalar function first. This function um, works on univariate functions, so only f uh, functions with only one variable and uh, this will return uh, such a nice description here if we run this on this um, yeah on this basic function x squared plus one um, yeah our return value um, is yeah, such an object where we have uh, some descriptions about how the minimization process uh, worked and uh, we have this fun value which is the function value at the position of the minimum. Uh, so the minimum it found was one. And we can see where the x value here is. And this is very close to zero. And um, as we know from math, uh, this x squared plus one has a minimum at zero. And um, yeah, this is not exactly zero because as I said earlier, these functions are only numerical estimates 
and are iterative, iteratively um, yeah, getting closer to this true result, but might not reach it exactly. But as you can see, uh, the object here also tells us that it succeeded. So it was able to find a minimum and didn't run into any problems uh, while searching for it. So um, this gives us some kind of guarantee um, of yeah how accurate our result was. So if success is false, then we know we can't use this result and it didn't find a minimum here. Okay, but let's have a look at um, yeah, how we can plot this. Um, we first define a function here again, this is polynomial, and um, then we again, as you've seen before, I define these x and y values, and I, I apply the function to the x values to get the y values, and then I'd use this result object from the minimize scalar function to um, yeah, draw this red dot here. And I can just access the values in this object um, by just using the attribute here. So res.x will give me the x position of this result and res.fun gives me the y value of the minimum. And as you can see here, this yeah, indeed found a local minimum in our function and was able to um, yeah, iteratively reach this destination. Um, but you might already notice that yeah, this is only a local minimum and not a global one. So it could have um, also gone in this direction and it could have found a, yeah, a, a deeper minimum, um, a global minimum, where this function goes towards negative infinity. But um, this function does not guarantee, so minimize scalar does not guarantee to find global minima. Um, it just looks for any kind of minimum in our function and then tries to get as close to that as possible. Okay, so now let's have a look at the multivariate case. And for that we define this um, function here again, we call it func. And here we don't take just one variable, but um, we take this var um, argument. And this is now a tuple of multiple variates, uh, variables and we can um, index them using the square brackets since this is just a tuple and this will be necessary for the minimize function in the multivariate case um, which will then pass multiple values, multiple variables to our function to find um, yeah, a minimum in this function. Okay, and um, for that now, as I said before, we will use this minimize function and not minimize scalar because we are now in the multivariate case. And to this minimize function, we also have to pass a starting position um, yeah, where the estimate will start to uh, look for a minimum and then um, yeah, use this value to reach the destination of where it found uh, a minimum in our function. And then here I again have just um, code for visualization. Um, since we're in the multivariate case now, we're using two variables here. Um, I'm creating a three-dimensional plot, and uh, yeah, I create x and y values here, then um, apply the function to these x and y values to get um, the z values, and then I just plot this um, as a contour plot, and I insert the result here of our um, optimization into this scatter plot and res.x in this case now is um, yeah, two-dimensional. So since we have a multivariate function, our x position, um, so the position where it found the minimum is not only one value anymore, but it's now multiple values. But uh, yeah, the minimum it found is still just yeah, one value since we're optimizing, uh, we'll, we're minimizing only one of the variables or yeah, the function value. Um, which is in the end one variable in our three-dimensional plot. Okay, so if we run this, you can see here our contour plot shows that um, we have this kind of funnel um, where we have a minimum here and the green dot uh, was correctly positioned in this minimum down here. And um, yeah, this green dot, dot comes from the scatter plot, which takes the results x position and uh, the yeah the function value 
and just marks it with a uh, with a green dot. So yeah, it correctly found the minimum in this multivariate function. Okay, so now um, coming from just minimizing a function value to finding roots of this uh, of a certain function. Um, here we again have two different functions. We have root scalar for multi for univariate function um, functions and the normal root function for multivariate functions. Um, but in this case, I will just show root scalar because the other one is just analog uh, analog to uh, the minimized one. So this is very similar in in this case. But for the root scalar function, we have to do something a little bit different. Here we don't just pass the function to our root scalar um, object, but we also have to um, yeah, set these x0 and x1 um, values. And x0 is, um, in the documentation, this is called the first guess, and x1 is called the second guess. And these are just two starting points for the optimizer um, to yeah, start looking for roots, because it will not it's not able to look at the whole range of the function. Um, it's only able to yeah, start from one position and go from there and maybe look at the second position as well and try to find um, roots of the function in, this, in the neighborhood of these two values. So you have to um, first yeah, pick these uh, values manually um, in order to um, let the optimizer find the actual root of the function. And um, yeah, the root scalar function has different optimizers and um, depending on if you specify these x0 or x1 values, um, it's going to choose different optimizers. So these are just different algorithms uh, which are able to find roots numerically. Um, instead of these x0 and x1, we could also define brackets um, so the parameter is then called brackets, and this would be um, just an interval, for example, minus one to two. But um, yeah, this would choose a different optimizer then, which is able to work with these brackets. So with a certain interval where it looks for roots. Um, but for this to work, we have to have um, yeah, a change in the sign of the function from the beginning of the interval to the end of the interval. So using these x0 and x1, um, it's just a bit more powerful because it can also search outside um, of this interval and we don't ha need to have a, a change of sign uh, yeah, between these two values. Okay, um, and as before with the minimize function, this root scalar function returns an object uh, which has some information about um, if it was able to find a root um, how the, the process of finding the root went and um, yeah, where the actual root was, of course. So if we run this, uh, we can see here that it uh, first tells us that uh, converged is true. So it actually converged at um, a root and um, it was able to find one. And here it also tells us how often the function uh, was called and how many iterations it took. And um, here you can truly see that this is an iterative process and it took um, 10 function calls to our function that we defined up here to find the root. And um, yeah, it's not just solving the um, derivative of the function and set it, uh, setting it to zero to find roots, but it's actually, um, uh, well, it's not yeah, just setting the function uh, to zero to find the roots, but it's numerically searching for, um, yeah, for roots in our function. And it also, of course, tells us the, where the root is. Here in this case, for our function is uh, negative 0.45. And uh, I mark this with a red dot in this plot here. And you can see that this actually is um, a root of the function. But we have two other roots as well. And um, yeah, this root scalar function is only able to figure out one of the roots. And depending on what our guesses here are, um, it will find different roots. So if we um, look, for example, um, at one first and our second guess would be three, uh, we would probably find another root here. And yeah, now it found this root here instead of the first one. And um, yeah, it's just um, 
depending on the guesses which you prov which you provide, it will find different roots in your function. Um, but if there's just one root, it will um, just always find this. Um, yeah, because it, there is just one. So if you have multiple roots in your function and you already know this, then it might be uh, helpful to run this root scalar multiple times. And um, in that case, maybe use brackets instead of these guesses and then just shift the bracket across your function um, to find, um, yeah, to always find a root in a certain window of your function. Okay, and then lastly, um, this doesn't really have anything to do with, um, with calculus or pretty much anything, basically. Uh, this was just quite funny, I think. Um, I came across this when I looked at the uh, SciPy documentation, but I think it can actually be quite useful. Um, for example, if you want to um, yeah, show something uh, quickly and you need an image to do some processing on that, um, yeah, that might happen for some reason. Um, then you can use this phase function from the MISC submodule and this function will um, return you an image of a raccoon. And I'm not sure why this is an image of a raccoon, but yeah, there it is. It's a raccoon. And um, you can also specify that um, you have this gray parameter, you can set it to true, and you will get a, um, a grayscale raccoon. But this is just um, a very easy way to access an image um, to do some yeah, to show some examples maybe um, in a presentation or wherever. Um, so you don't have to load an image from, from your disk or download it from somewhere. Um, this phase function is just, I guess, quite useful in some special cases.